the price of a stock will follow the direction of earnings. In almost every case, you can generally state that if a company's earnings go up sharply, the stock's going to go up. If earnings go from very poor to mediocre, the stock's probably going to rise. If they go from mediocre to good, it's probably going to have another rise. If it goes from good to excellent, it's probably going to have another rise. Or if a company's earnings grow dramatically over a long period of time, the stock's probably going to go up dramatically. Even if you have a Waterford crystal ball, you probably can't predict a company's earnings. But Wall Street has a whole army of people who make such predictions. By computer, you can get Wall Street earnings estimates in the research section of the stock shop or through many other online services. Or you can go to your local library and find earnings estimates in Value Line or Standard & Poor's. Obviously, you want to invest in companies whose earnings are expected to rise. But again, these are just estimates. If you really understand a company, you should know how it plans to make earnings rise. If you know it has good growth prospects, then you'll be better able to evaluate the company as an investment. You can't predict the future, but you can learn from the past. A company with a long history of earnings increases and dividend increases is obviously a stable performer that has a reasonable chance of continuing to perform well in the industry. Many times that's a good company to investigate further. Johnson & Johnson has raised its earnings something like 19 in the last 20 years. It's raised its dividend over 30 years in a row. But just because a company has had a great record in the past does not mean earnings will grow terrifically well in the future. You have to have reasons for it. Strong growth in research and development, cost-cutting, new products, great brand name, and a terrific balance sheet were the items that made me optimistic about Johnson & Johnson. And what's the outlook that's going to keep continuing to grow? They run out of steam. Stock's going to run out of steam. Price-earnings ratio is something that some people make very complex. It's actually very simple. If a company is selling $100 a share and they're earning $10, it has a price-earnings multiple of 10. The P-E ratio can be thought of as the number of years it will take the company to earn back the amount of your initial investment, assuming, of course, that the company's earnings stay constant. Why look at P-E? It can tell you if you're paying too much for a stock. The higher the P.E., the more expensive the stock relative to the company's future earning power. The lower the P.E., the cheaper the stock. I use a rule of thumb to level out these differences. A fairly priced stock is a P.E. that's about equal to the expected annual growth rate over the next three to five years. If the P.E. is substantially higher than the growth rate, the stock is normally expensive. If the P.E. is substantially lower, stock is probably cheap. A stock P.E., in part, depends on the industry that it's in. When you look in a growth company, you compare the company's growth rate and its own P.E. to that of the industry. All other things being equal, if you find a company with a much lower P.E. and a higher growth rate, you're off to a good start. You can also compare a company's P.E. to its own historical P.E. If a company normally sells for 25 times earnings, and now it's selling at 15 or less, you have to ask yourself why. The company could be maturing, competition may be entering the field, and its growth prospects may be uncertain. But maybe it's simply been beaten down by some other factors, and it's possibly a bargain. It's worth researching. Back in the 1970s, Electronic Data Systems, or EDS, had a P.E. of 500 times earnings. If you had invested in a company with a P.E. this high when Columbus discovered America, and the company's earnings stayed constant, you'd just be breaking even today. In 1974, EDS performed very well. But its stock fell from 40 to 3, simply because the stock was so grossly overpriced relative to current earnings.